Thanks for the lift, Heatwave. You're a lot faster than our floating lab, and way cooler. I sure don't mind getting away from fire for a day. One thing about the ocean, it doesn't burn. Sea monster! <laughs> or maybe smudge? <laughs> Sorry. Three more miles due east, Doc. Is that it? Drilling platform number six. They used to call it Old Faithful when it was pumping oil. Then it went drier than Danny's meatloaf. <laughs> so why start it up again after all these years? New owners. They think they can drill deeper and find more oil. I suspect the seabed below the rig has become too unstable for any new drilling. That's what the mayor wants us to find out. The town can't issue any new drilling permits until we know for sure. Getting a little choppy, guys. Hang on. Whirlpool, dead ahead! Turn, Heatwave! Quickly! <sighs> can't pull free! Too strong! Ah! <laughs> Mayday! SOS! Dad! Somebody! It's no use. There's no one around for miles. Uh... says Autobot, but I've never seen any bot that big. Oh, well, it looks like he means us no harm. So far. No oh my! Who is this guy? Hey, uh, Thanks for the save, but I got it from here. Let go! Hey, did you hear me? You gonna let us down or what? Hey. That bot's got some nerve. who you are, but you and I are gonna have some words. High tide, my friend. Welcome to Earth. Opie, you land yacht, how are you? Optimus? Thank you for answering my call. Good thing I did. I was having a gander at the local seabed when I caught their SOS. Found this wee rowboat circling the drain. Wait, you... You know this guy? This is High Tide, my old comrade in arms and the finest master seaman who ever lived. High Tide, meet rescue bot Heatwave. And these are some of the humans I was telling you about. Dr. Green and Frankie, Graham and Cody Burns. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for saving us. Huh. Now then, you wanted some words with me. Any in particular? Just, uh... Well, thanks for the rescue. Come. I want you to meet the rest of the team as well. <sighs> Rowboat. High Tide has come at my request for a purpose. To make our team seaworthy. Is this about the time I accidentally sank Heatwave? No, Blades. This is about getting some advanced training in seagoing rescue techniques. We've made plenty of water rescues. I know. But if that old oil rig is reactivated, we may need skills beyond even yours. That's why I've asked Optimus for help. It does seem prudent. If my suspicions are confirmed, any new drilling could potentially trigger an ecological calamity. That is why I called in an expert. The Chief has graciously agreed to go without your services during your training. 
We can use our old rides for a few days. During that time, High Tide will lead you. Follow his instructions and learn from him. Ooh, new honcho bot in town, big guy. Better watch your step. If Optimus says you're the real deal, that's good enough for me. Agreed. We will endeavor to make you proud. <laughs> we'll see. In truth, High Tide has much to learn from the team as well. Oh, the smoke alarm. Meatloaf must be done. Dinner! You too, Doc and Frankie. <laughs> Thanks. One last thing, High Tide. I recommend having a human guide to help you negotiate their world. Don't trouble yourself, Opie. Frankly, I find the species not worth bothering with. Humans may yet surprise you. I suggest Cody as your guide. He has experience orienting Autobots. Yeah, I suppose a small one can't be too much trouble. He's hardly a blip on my radar. <laughs> Ten, hut. <laughs> Look at you scurvy wharf rats. Uh, Optimus didn't give me much to work with, did he? What are you supposed to be? Some oversized skeeter bot? Um, uh, actually, a helicopter, sir? It wasn't really my idea. You see, one day, just after we'd arrived on Earth... When I want your life story, I'll ask for it. Understand? Flyboy. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. I mean... Ow. Servo! Whoa! Noble! Oil spill! Sir, as I'm sure you are aware, the Marine Code classifies oil as a hazardous material to be collected and disposed of responsibly. What? Hear that, Servo? Why, we're practically criminals. But he's sure enough right. Here, Swabby, start mopping. Um, uh, oh, you mean me? Uh, uh, to the best of my ability, sir. Swabby. Job one is to make you mangy lots seaworthy. Servo, some marine rescue gear for these sea slugs. Too cool! You're the handiest bot ever. Kinda cute, too. Big Red's already a fireboat, and the Mosquito's got a rescue harness. So what to give you? Here. Uh, surfboard? Um, I've never really learned how. Well, then it's about time you did. Anyway, the board will do the surfing for you. Climb on! And for me, sir? You're doing a fine job, Shippy. Keep at it. Now, there's a throttle under your front toe. Ah! Use your knees! Lean into it! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Go Boulder! I feel so light! <laughs> so free! Whoa! Whoa! So sinking! Boulder! Boulder! Rescue bots, roll to play that! He's heading for a deep water trench. Way too risky for a crew of hatchlings. I don't even know why I bother swabbing the deck. All anyone does is drip on it. Sorry, sir. Guess I got kind of carried away. You sure did. Almost permanent-like. At sea, there's no room for error. Yes, sir. It's okay, Boulder. I can't surf either. Now, me dainties, if we can get back to our drills. 
try to get this right, Flyboy. Servo, victim mode. Gold approaching to the sun. The glare off the water makes it too hard to see him. Swing that tail around. Hold your position steady. Now drop that line. Uh, Mr. High Tide, Blades actually does a lot better if you encourage him instead of yelling. Oh, do you think so, Blip? Well. I've been training bots for thousands of cycles, so I think I know how to train this one! Okay, calm, deep breaths, go to your happy place. Slow and easy. Guys! Speed it up, you bomby bug! Ah! Whoa! Any chance he didn't notice that? So, team, how'd your first day go? It wasn't my fault! That bad, huh? Well, you'll do better tomorrow. Whoa, what is that? His name is Servo. He appears to be a cross between a schnauzer and a toolbox. Impressive. He belongs to High Tide. I just volunteered to buff out his dings after today's, um, incident. It wasn't my fault! The rig's in even worse shape than we thought. Rusted beams, missing struts, exposed wiring. That's not all. The cap on this well looks dangerously corroded. If it gets any worse, it could cause a huge oil spill. I'll file my report today. I'm recommending that site be off-limits until the rig is repaired and that old cap replaced. I agree. I'll order a new one, then run some tests to find the best way to install it. Now, let's see if we can get through this drill in one piece. Servo will dive into the brine. Boulder, you'll surf in to scoop him up, then back to Heat Wave. Be wary of the waves. They'll pull you under and keep you there. Chase, keep an eye on Boulder. Blades, yeah. Blades, where in blazes is that lily-livered locust? Take it easy, Milo. We're gonna take you to the hospital. Um, Copterbot, return to base. Wait, you mangy moth! Get back here now! But, sir, a human needed help. Those weren't your orders. When you're under my command, you don't move till I say so. You're a washout mosquito, a waste of energon! And you're a big bully! Whoa. Oh dear. Uh oh. Blade spotted a real emergency, and he did exactly the right thing, because he cares about people. We're here to help, don't you get that? Ah, uh, you got gumption, Blip, I'll give you that. And I hate gumption! So stay out of things that aren't your concern, you hear me? We've all been hearing you, now you hear me. Cody's right. I'm only sorry I didn't say it first. There's no more loyal or helpful rescue bot than Blades, in this or any other galaxy. Hey, wave. You mean that? Not now! I don't care how chummy you are with Optimus. Nobody talks to my team that way. Nobody. That's it, Pucko. Incompetence is one thing, but insubordination is another. Get off my ship! <sighs> Anybody else feeling expendable? Before I let Optimus know what a bunch of slimy scallopro you all are. I am unsure of the meaning, but I'm certain it was not complimentary. Sorry I let you down, Optimus. I know you wanted us to learn from him. High tide can be demanding, even harsh, but I asked him here for a reason. With all due respect, sir, he crossed a line. So maybe I should just sit this one out and let him teach the others. I would prefer you return. I don't believe either of you has finished learning from the other. 
But the decision must be yours. Hmm, as I feared. It's just peanut butter, Daddy. No, I mean these readings. I've been trying to determine the best way to install that new oil cap. But the situation is more critical than I thought. This entire area is far too unstable for future drilling. With any rig, one tremor could trigger a disaster. Griffin Rock emergency. What? Right away. Cody, call High Tide. Tell him we need him and the bots. Now. I see them. Just barely. They're surrounded by burning oil. And that rig looks ready to fall over. Do your job, Mosquito. Yes, sir. No, Blades. We can't reach them. The fire's too high. We'll have to find another way. You, Red, out of my cabin. Or I'm going, you can't. But too dangerous. Now, scoot. What? What are we? Hi, Ty. Any luck? I tried to plug the leak. Couldn't be done. We await your order, sir. What now? Ah, your cockamamie planet and its flaming oceans. Look! Finally! Somebody who does know fire! <sighs> Vacation's over, hotshot. Time to get to work. Hey, I was waiting for you. End of the line code, too dangerous. I need some of that goo you used to soak up the oil. Oh, and, uh, permission to come aboard, sir. Granted. Chase, you and Servo load up his tanks with a dispersant. We need to put that new cap on the leak, but we have to get to it first. I'm going in for Doc and Frankie. Follow me on your board. Chase, you with us? I am not sure my mopping experience will prove useful, but I am most happy to help. Rescue bots, surf to the rescue! Ah! Almost there. That's it! Pull up! Uh, it's getting a little heavy. We're almost clear. Now! Move your taillights! Ready with the cap? It refuses to stay in place! Hi, Tide. Time to go Megabot. Just what I was thinking, Blip. You'll be a sailor yet.
was destroyed, Mayor Lusky. And I'm afraid the site is too dangerous to consider any future drilling permits. I gotta admit, OP, your bilge rats got the right stuff. Even the whirlybird found high gear. Sadly, that's the nicest thing he's ever said to me. Good work, Skeeter. Second nicest. <laughs> you have taught them, High Tide, but you have also learned from them. And that was your plan from the get-go, weren't it, you old skellywag? Well, you were right. Teaming up with humans mm, might not be the worst idea ever. You all work well together, and it might be my management style could use a bit of finessing. I have one more request. Since Dr. Green's floating lab was lost in the fire, would you be willing to remain on Earth for a time to take its place? Till I'm needed elsewhere, it'd be my pleasure. I'm off. Servo, stay here and watch over these lollygaggers. That's an order. Blip, uh, Cody, here's his whistle. Keep it for me, will you? Noble. <laughs> Frankie, I'm just... Okay, good news first or bad? <laughs> Frankie, I have to go on a... Okay, bad news, I guess. I'd like to get it out of the way first. Remember the science camp I applied for us to go to? I was accepted! That's not bad news. But you weren't. The good news, I talked to the camp director, and if you take a catch-up math class, you're in! Um, it's okay. I've been busy with the rescue team lately and... But if you don't come to camp, we'll barely see each other all summer. Cody! Leaving now! I have to go, but I know you'll love it at camp. Congratulations! <sighs> I'm sorry to pull you away. I know you haven't seen Frankie much lately. Yeah, she's been in the lab a lot more, and I've been busy here. But you're still best friends, right? Yeah, I guess, but... I'd hate to see you two grow apart. Grow apart of what? <gasps> like a new piece of your body or something? Ew. No, Blades, we don't mean... <gasps> Look out! Is everyone all right? You bet. And we have a visitor. How do you do? I'm Chief Burns. Ah, Americans, yes? What year is this? What year? I'm sorry, sir, but who are you exactly? Ah, how rude of me. So sorry. My name is Jules. Vern. Not this guy. Yeah, I'm out. Did I uh, say something wrong? Well, it's just that there's a famous author from the 1800s named Jules Verne. Uh, no, no, no. I've written a few things, but hardly famous. I'm reading this book at school, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but it's over a hundred years old. You're this Jules Verne? Uh, no, I do not recognize this. He's a fake. Even I've heard of that book, and I've never heard of any books. Well, if he really is a time traveler, he could have come from a point before he wrote the book. No way, fake. Uh, Cade? Mm, 
time travel. I hate time travel. But how does a hot air balloon become a time machine? My balloon? Where is it? It has something very important on it. Heatwave and I brought it over. The bots are unloading it now. Heatwave? The heatwave? Ça va bien, then I am not worried. Wait, you know about... Heatwave. I still maintain that hot air balloons are a hard to control outdated Earth technology. But they're charming. Yeah, till you have to untangle the wreckage from the trees. Beep. The other robots have returned. Beep up. Oh. <laughs> Do not pretend for my sake. On a trip to our future, I met, uh, we'll meet? A very advanced, uh, how you say, la la la, Cybertronians. Oui, oui, oui. Okay, one, he knows about Cybertron. Two, more advanced than us. And three, what's wee wee wee? It means yes in French. Rescue bots meet Jules Verne. He's visiting from the past of France. Verne? As in Verne device? The instrument Dr. Morocco uses to power his chamber of youth. You know of Thaddeus Morocco? That is whom I have come to find. We are friends. Any friend of his can polish Hold my... Hold on, Heatwave. Mr. Vern, maybe you'd better explain. Thaddeus and I met at the London Exposition of 1862. We shared scientific findings, and soon I trusted him enough to give him one of the two prototype devices I'd been working on. But soon after, our interests went in different directions. I focused on exploration to further the advancement of mankind. Thaddeus, it seemed, worked to advance only one man, trying to make himself younger, stronger, wealthier. I should have intervened, but I was so caught up in my own work, I, I let us drift about. But just this morning, well, this morning in Paris 1869, I received a message consisting only of these coordinates and today's date. And you think the message was from Morocco? Who else? But now without my balloon, how am I going to get back there? Mr. Vern, meet High Tide. He's been kind enough to give us transport. Incroyable. Thanks, I think. Ready to fetch, boy? <laughs> <laughs> A boy and his mechanical dog? Man's best friend, they say, no? Servo's a Cybertronian helper bot, but he is pretty friendly. Friendship, young man, is precious. Never forget this. We've reached the coordinates. No island. Nothing on my scanners. What is it, Servo? Ah, hello, we have hit something. No! Dad! <laughs> it's okay, son. I'm just a little... Catch of the day. Do marine mammals come with built in cameras? Not usually, no. Aw, it wants to play. I think he wants us to follow him. I doubt that whale is saying anything, son. But I could be wrong. <clears throat> High tide. Looks like an underwater trip. I can help you with that. Beautiful. The under 
fantasy world reveals herself to us. Yes, a book about such things must be written. Detecting another ship. Dad, I think it's the Nemo. Uh, what is this Nemo? I'm guessing it's the reason you were sent to these coordinates. Hold on, we're docking. No sign of anyone. Looks like there's an upper deck. You two stay behind me. Jules, you came. I knew you would. Thaddeus. Wow. Dr. Morocco, you got really old. Excuse the whale attack, Jules. Had I known it was you on board, I'd never have put the ship in danger. Why would you want to put anyone in danger, Thaddeus? I have a history with this family and their robots. But come, embrace me. I have missed you, mon ami. Sorry to interrupt the reunion, but you're coming with us, Morocco. Chief Burns. Delightful as ever. Come to slap the irons on me? How did you even get this submarine back? I was forced to trade my Vern device to the pinch woman for the return of my ship. I'd intended on outsmarting her, of course, but... And without the device, you can't run your chamber of youth. Bright as ever, aren't we? But before I surrendered the device, I took a chance. Though I lack the energy source to send myself through time, I wagered, apparently correctly, that there was enough power to deliver a piece of paper. <laughs> a message to the past and my old friend. And my very oldest friend, over 140 years, incroyable. I used my device to travel through time. You used yours to defy it. I could have traveled through time as well. If only you had shared your energy source with me. You know I took an oath to never reveal that secret. All that matters is that you came. And with your device, I can operate my chamber of youth and save my life. Certainement. It is yours to use. Sorry, Mr. Vern. But in the present, this man is a wanted criminal. What transgressions has he committed? Where do we start? There's the nanites, the Morbot, the T-Rex. The weather machine. Oh, I do so love hearing my resume recited. <laughs> Thaddeus, I am disappointed at how you have abused your intellectual gifts. This is not the man I knew. Do what you must. Chief to Chase. Be ready to take a prisoner into custody. Ah, I'd hoped not to resort to this. But it's clear that force is the only thing you understand. Morocco, it's you! I'm sure that you remember my charming metal-eating ants that I controlled with pheromone signals. I've since improved the technology. I can now mimic the communication of undersea creatures and, as you saw earlier, use it to control them. Guys, trouble headed your way. What kind of trouble? Ah! Ah! Oh! Whoa! Oh! Oh! Ah! Earthquake! Uh, sea quake! I'm starting to hate the ocean. Rescue bots, protect the ship! Destroy your robot friends. Whoa! Oh. 
Blades, take servo! your attack will surrender not so fast chief that's my tender and I have a little something to say in the matter Big fella, isn't he? New member of the team. Game's over, Doctor. I surrender. But I beg you, allow me to use the Chamber of Youth when we arrive back, or I shall perish within days. Oh, I'm back to my old young self. More time to serve your sentence with. Come on. Come to gloat, have you? Of course not. Such a friendship. How did we come to this? Frankie, it's me. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Listen, I wanted to... Well, I just don't want us turning into these guys. Dr. Morocco. But who's the other one? I'll explain later. Just watch. I made my choices, as did you. We simply took different paths. No, mon ami. There was only one path, and you left it. Nonsense. My dreams were bigger than yours. I took what I wanted, and I apologize for none of it. Most things I have found can be measured in this world, except the bounds of human ambition. I am sorry, Thaddeus. I should have tried out to be a good friend. Perhaps if I had. <laughs> so you think one of us is gonna turn into an evil villain? <sighs> no, not that part. The part about best friends, drifting away from each other. I decided I'm going to take the extra math course so we can go to science camp together. I don't want us to end up like Morocco and Jules Verne. Thanks, Cody. Wait, that's Jules Verne? As in THE Jules Verne? I'll be right over. Balloons repaired. She is just about ready to go, Mr. Verne. Ah, uh, merci. Magnifique. Is that him? Captain, I am thinking. I would like to take Thaddeus back into the past. He should serve his sentence in his own era. I'm sorry, Mr. Verne, but our facilities are far more secure than anything in your day. I'm not willing to take the risk of him escaping again. Ah, <sighs> wait. Um, Dad, you know how Morocco used the Verne device to erase people's memories? What if we did that to him? Reset his memory to before he started being bad? Hmm. Très intéressant. With no memory of his past, my old friend could have a second chance. But if you take this Morocco back, his younger self is already living in your time. Can both of them be there? Sorry to interrupt, but did I mention I hate time travel? Hmm, a conundrum. I should take him to the future. He can live there. I will visit him. We will build our friendship again. Danny, let's head back to the jail and pick up our guest. Mr. Vern, I'd like you to meet my best friend. <laughs> Is that Energon? Oui, my energy source. It interacts with the device by, uh, comment dit-on? 
in a special way, creating the ability to travel through time. Is that how you met, I mean, meet the Autobots? I cannot discuss the future. No one should know their own destiny, no matter how important it is. What's that about? No clue. If he has something to say to me, he should just come out and say it, even if it is in French. Okay, Doctor, time to... Huh? He escaped. Energon. His energy source. No, Thaddeus, wait! The Energon will be your final gift to me, mon ami. Wave the balloon down! <laughs> <laughs> Next time you attempt to stop a hot air balloon, please assure you wear your helmet. Glad to see you too, Chase. It's time, I think, for us to drift even further apart, Jules. What? No! Rocco, you need to be nicer to people. A grand adventure it has been. Merci, au revoir, mes amis. I wish I'd asked him to sign my copy. Anyone know what au revoir means? It's like, till we meet again. Huh. Wonder what he meant by that. Don't you get it? You'll meet him in the future. He just didn't want to tell you. Oops. I guess I shouldn't have told you either. Okay, whoa. Whoa. Time travel. Still hate it. Do you think Jules managed to wipe Dr. Morocco's memory? Let us hope so. The future will be much safer if he is reformed. If they made it to the future. <laughs> I think they did. And I think they become friends again. Oh, Jules, thank you for showing me around. It is nice to spend time with you, my old friend. I've always loved Harry. Are we going? Now in the news on Griffin Rock. Brought to you by the makers of Lusky's Hair Tonic. A full head of hair for your full-time man. Today, a time capsule goes into the ground, filled with items representing the people of this main island community. Local citizens and scientists are all on hand for the ceremony. And there's Dr. Elma Hendrickson, who spearheaded the effort. This time capsule will not see the light of day again until it's reopened in 75 years. Until then, Horace Burns will stand guard and we'll see you in the news. And from the old newsreel, we'll dissolve to our video. We are so getting an A on this project. Okay, Cody, action! 75 years have come and gone. Tomorrow, Griffin Rock will dig up that time capsule and- What's inside of it? Cut! Blades, you bots can't be seen talking on camera, remember? Oh, right, sorry. But I can't stand the suspense. And action. <clears throat> there is no record of what items were put into the capsule, but seeing what was meaningful back then will help us understand how much Griffin Rock has changed. Changed? <sighs> how long have we been here? And they're still not ready to accept the idea of aliens much less embrace us. I'm ready to embrace everyone, right now. Come on, hug up. Don't even. Ugh, okay, cut. Cody, maybe we should get some comments from people around town. Good idea, my dad said he'd help. Hey dad, can we get that interview now? Not quite yet, son. I'm diamond shopping with Doc, direct from the factory. Doc, are there diamonds even left in this old mine? If there are, my gemstone detector will find them. Seems like choosing an engagement ring shouldn't be this hard. I want to create something special for Anna. She deserves nothing less. A question about the exchange of marriage rings. Are they perhaps symbolic of handcuffs, designed to prevent your spouse from escaping? <laughs> no, Chase. The rings signify a bond between two people. 
Marriage changes everything. It's like the ground suddenly shifting underneath your oh. A routine patrol with four bats and stasis. He's made of a poke in the strangest of places. Earth was their home now and in addition. Optimus Prime gave them this mission. Learn from the human, serve and protect. Live in their world, earn their respect. Sir, you may release the beam and I will catch you both. I find myself uh, having a little trouble letting go. I don't think you'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, partner. What do you say we end this shopping trip for the day, huh? Not yet. Looks like a blue light special. for Anna's hand, but I think she'll like it. Of course she will. Another diamond? It appears to be a rare form of reactoline. Is that a gemstone? Yes, basically. With a few metals thrown in. Hmm. Veins of reactoline apparently run under the entire island. I've never even heard of it. I've only encountered one other specimen of this caliber in an ancient statue displayed in our museum. I've always wanted to experiment on it, but it's much too valuable. Say no more, Doc. Chase, dig her up, and then get us out of here. Right away, sir. Where's Chief Burns? Where is Chief Burns? An unruly crowd, a family taking refuge, and many, many questions. I'm Huxley Prescott, and tomorrow is official dig up an old time capsule and bury a new one day. And people want to know what will be going inside the new capsule. And why does Chief Burns get to decide? Put this inside. I need to rip Chief right here. here. Wonderful. Just leave your items outside, everyone. I'll review them later. How long has this craziness been going on? Hours. Frankie and I tried interviewing everyone about the old time capsule, but all they care about is what's going into the new one. Yeah, I guess it's because people want to be remembered. What we leave behind does say a lot about us. What's everyone so excited about? There's stuff in my cab older than 75 years. That makes us all time capsules. Whoa. It'll be interesting to see what people in the past thought was important enough to bury. Probably not so different from what's important today. Things that remind them of family, friends, hope for the future. At least my family isn't caught up in all this hysteria. Exactly, Dad. Just forget about the people outside. Because my helmet really needs to go in the capsule for sure. Dad, as your only daughter, I think this should go in. So please don't say no. Oh, how about something that actually contributed to this town? Like my tablet. Oh, I contribute on, every time I, I wear this. And 85 you of your brain. It That's would appear we are going to need a larger capsule. As long as there's room for this. My scoop claw. Put that away, Blades. We're not part of this community. Why would you say that, Heatwave? Because despite everything we've done for this town, they still just see us as rescue equipment. But you keep saving everyone anyway. Griffin Rock obviously means something to you guys, so that makes you a part of it. It makes us part of this family, that's all. Oh, Wait, look, 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 small look, little fit! Little fit. Oh, thank you. Sir, the crowd will not disperse. Shall I break out the riot gear? Oh, they'll leave soon enough. Storm's on its way. I hope Woodrow doesn't get caught in it. I was unaware that your brother was planning a visit. You know him. He never misses a chance to dig up something. He's coming over on his boat. Can't wait to see what he wants to put in the new capsule. Blades? <sighs> That's not what I meant by put it away. Fine, but then this doesn't get to go in there either. Commit.
Commencing test two, sonic bombardment of reactylene. Intriguing. The same results as with the electricity in test one. The reactylene is so conductive, it takes on the properties of whatever energy source it's exposed to. Though the effect does appear temporary. Then that proves your hypothesis, right, Daddy? One more test before we can confirm, my little Edison. Commencing test three, magnetizing the reactylene. It appears as if it's being magnetically drawn in that direction, but not toward metal. Oh dear, that direction is downtown. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue! Power up and energize! Perhaps someone should hold on to me. I'm on it! Literally! What? Uh oh. Touch the displays. I wonder what Doc did to this reactylene. We just magnetized it. And that caused it to be pulled toward another object with the same properties. This statue. Like a giant super magnet. Thank you for visiting. Please exit through the gift shop. The storm's getting worse. I hope Uncle Woodrow's okay. Rescued me. I told you we should have just put him into a life raft. There wasn't time. Then what'll we do when he doesn't find any humans on board? Well, considering most humans aren't the brightest points on the sextant, I'll handle it. Shh. Here he comes. Hello? Hello? You have been rescued by an unmanned automated vessel. Amazing! I've never heard of such a thing. Except for... Except for Autobots. Hey, you're from Cybertron, aren't you? Uh, no. What do you know about Autobots? I'm Woodrow, brother to Chief Charlie Burns of Griffin Rock. <laughs> I'm family. The Woodrow Burns, the one Optimus talks about, the underground expedition. Optimus and I are like this. Uh, this one's me. I'm Salvage. This is Blur. And that's High Tide. It's him we're riding on. Oh, well, his vessel. Good thing we came by when we did. Or you'd have been really late to Griffin Rock. Oh, that's where we're headed. Optimus asked us to observe the time capsule ceremony as a lesson in Earth culture. <laughs> and when Optimus asks, we go. Well, this storm? I just hope Charlie doesn't have to cancel the whole shebang.
with the storm threatening, the unearthing of the 75-year-old time capsule is about to begin. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're a little rushed due to inclement weather. So without further ado, rescue robots, begin! Did you finish the ring, Daddy? I intend to pop the question as soon as the ceremony is over. And now, let's see what the townsfolk of yesteryear wanted us to learn about them. Chief, if you'd be so kind. <gasps> yeah, what, what? That's it? A crystal? Were they kidding? Maybe this note will explain. Dear future citizens of Griffin Rock, I'm Dr. Elma Hendrickson. I am sorry for removing the items from the time capsule, but this quantum crystal is an important discovery and too dangerous to fall into the wrong hands. I trust the scientists of tomorrow will be much more responsible with it. Now, of all the Chief Burns, let's hope the artifacts you choose for the new capsule aren't as disappointing as this. Scoop Claw, just saying. Wrong hands? What was she afraid of, do you think? It only took a tiny piece of a quantum crystal to power Daddy's teleportation device. Remember how that turned out? The MHQ zapping all over town with us in it. If this crystal that big has the same properties, no telling what it's capable of. What a... Should we evacuate the island? No need for that yet. But I suggest clearing the area until we know what we're dealing with. Here, go home, folks. Nothing more to see here. Hey, and just to be on the safe side, I'll be on my yacht. What does it all mean? I'm out of here. <laughs> Run! Oh, you know Please, that? everyone, there's no need to... <sighs> ah, the old hometown. <laughs> It'll be good to be back. Yeah, I can't say that I miss it. Though, sometimes I wonder how Cody is. Looks like we haven't seen the worst of this storm. The waves emitted by this crystal are off the charts. Dr. Hendrickson was right. This is quite a powerful artifact. We have to get it inside. If it's struck by lightning, it could trigger a teleportation. For now, let's just put it back where we found it. Bots? Ah! <gasps> Reactaline! Oh, dear. Seriously, someone want to tell me where Griffin Rock went? We'll worry about that later. Right now, people need our help. <gasps> Daddy! I'm here, Francine. Create a windbreak around them! Where'd this blizzard come from? More like, where did we go? Magnetic North. I don't know how, but 
Griffin Rock has been teleported to the Arctic. The, the properties of the quantum crystal were absorbed into the veins of Reactaline underground. Basically making the whole island a teleportation device. <sighs> okay, but can't we, like, reverse it and go home? That crystal is history. This is not acceptable. Ice makes flying almost impossible. Then again, I could learn to love it here. We need to get people off this island fast. To where? I don't believe there is an evacuation plan in place that covers this situation. And for that, I apologize. We have to do something. Nobody can survive these temperatures for long. We could race a dome. That would keep the blizzard out. Is there enough power for that, Doc? For a while, at least. But first, the four dome generators will have to be de-iced. Sounds like a plan to me. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue. made it. Let's just hope their de-icing foam can free up those generators. Power up and energize! Dad, what do we do after the dome's up? We're still stranded. We'll figure it out. One thing stays the same through every generation on Griffin Rock. We're resourceful. The generators are all ready. Fingers crossed. I'd never stop shivering. Before the snow melts, shall we enjoy some winter activities? A snowball fight, perhaps? I'll take that as a yes. Uh, no telling how long this dome will stay up. <sighs> I know this is a temporary fix, but sometimes you just gotta take a breath and enjoy what's good. <sighs> You're right. That's long enough. Let's go. Uh, Daddy? What's that mean? It means the dome is depleting our energy supplies faster than I anticipated. And with the blizzard outside still raging, we need a plan B. Immediately. Frankie, you really want to keep making the video? Somebody has to document this, Cody. It's not every day your entire island gets teleported to the Arctic. Digging up Griffin Rock's 75-year-old time capsule was a big surprise, in lots of ways. Only one thing was inside, a teleportation crystal put there by a scientist to keep it safe. But it wasn't. Lightning hit the crystal, and when it touched the reactylene veins underground, the whole island disappeared. We showed up here, on a glacier, thousands of miles from Maine. If Doc Green hadn't put up the dome to protect the island, we'd all be frozen by now. I'm afraid it's worse than I thought. Without external power, the dome won't last more than a day. And the phones still aren't working. We're on our own. 
If Graham and I hadn't taken the Sigma apart for maintenance, we could fly for help. Blades and I will go. I don't like it, but we're out of options. Be careful, you two. I'll open the door. before I ice up, too. We need an evacuation plan. If we stay here, we'll freeze. You mean leave the island behind? Come on, Doc. Isn't there something on your best left forgotten shelf that would help out here? Not unless you'd like to be transmogrified or ingested by living ooze. Been there, done those. What about Floatium? You're getting as hard to understand as Graham code. Maybe we could use it to fill the dome and float the island home. Like tying balloons to a house to make it fly. I saw that in a movie. Oh, do you think we'll get to meet talking dogs? Hmm, Floatium would get us in the air, but it won't fly us anywhere. And how do we steer? The Sigma's rocket. It'll give us propulsion and steering. That might actually work. Floatium lasts longer than helium giving us enough lift and time to return to the waters of Maine. Will the dome stay up long enough for that? With our backup batteries, yes. Sounds like our only option. Let's roll, team. Dr. Green says this is the last of the Floatium. Here goes. Think light thoughts. Is gonna be dripping on my deck until we have a better plan. We can't just sit around, we should be doing something. Charlie! Woodrow, we finally got phone reception. Are you all right? Ugh, fine now, thanks to your new rescue bot recruits. But how and where are you? Don't worry, we're safe. And Griffin Rock is flying home. It's a long story. Anything we can do to help? You could check the seafloor. Doc says when we land, we have to line up perfectly with the hole we left, or the island could break apart. Finally, something to do. Did High Octane Brain forget who the submersible is around here? Woody, you're in charge while I'm gone. 
Take care of everyone. You can count on me, big bro. Uh, guys, you should probably see this. It'll take days to clear. Well, at least now you have lots to do, Blur. Not what I had in mind. Well, we owe you one, Doc. Your Floatium is a real lifesaver. Uh, something wrong, Doc? I just realized in all our unexpected travel, I never proposed to Anna. Perhaps I should wait for a better time. Dad, there's only one good time to tell someone how much you care about them. Now. Spoken from the heart, my little cardiologist. I'll go ask her to marry me right this instant. Griffin Rock Emergency. Hi, Mr. Pfeiffer. I'll tell my dad. Stay inside. A huge hole just opened in the ground next to Mr. Pfeiffer's shop. It's so deep, he says he can see the sky through it. No end to the emergencies, team. Meet me at the bakery. This island was never meant to fly, Dad. Without solid earth to support it, the underground tunnels are crumbling. And if anyone's standing above them when they do... Let's hope they're wearing a jetpack. I've pinpointed the locations of the most unstable places here. That's Professor Baranova's house. Doc just went there. Team, clear people out of the areas on Boulder's map. Hurry! Come on, Doc, pick up. Oh, careful, Estra. I almost de-iced you along with my azaleas. Anna, will you marry me? Professor! We're down here! Excellent timing! Chase, help me pull them up! <clears throat> Thank you, Charlie. I should have realized flight could make parts of the island unstable. We should fill the sinkholes with foam to prevent floatium leakage and... Ezra! Yes. I'm glad you agree. Now, we should head back to the lab and... Uh, Doc, she said yes. It appears the professor accepts your matrimonial proposal. You... you mean... you, you do? You will? It's the only logical answer. I'm surprised it took you so long to arrive at it. <gasps> yes! Way to go, Daddy! An earthquake? In the air? Worse. It appears something is wrong with the dome. Dad, a new sinkhole just opened up. Near one of the dome generators. Ah! It's about to lose its power source. Dome is losing floatium like a leaky balloon. Graham, get that generator working again. Everyone else, keep the townsfolk safe. Easier said than done. <laughs> okay, attach the batteries, buddy. Dad, we got the dome working, but I'm not sure for how long. Back to the firehouse, team. Something tells me it's time to think up a plan C. D might not be a bad idea either. By my calculations, Griffin Rock is about an hour away from home. The bad news is we're running out of power to keep the dome up. Okay, so what's the good news? There really isn't any. Bro, you never say the bad news is without giving good news. Don't you know that? I thought you said we had enough power to get home, Doc. That was before the sinkhole took out the dome generator. We used all our remaining batteries to replace it. But there are plenty of other energy sources on Griffin Rock. Yeah, the wind farm, the water turbines. Can't we use those? 
They require wind and flowing water. Two things a domed floating island is quite without. But what we do have is plenty of humans. Do not remind me. So many look to us for protection, yet we may fail them in this hour of need. No, Chase. I mean the humans can turn the turbines. We'll all work together to make power. When our ancestors arrived on Griffin Rock, they knew there were challenges ahead. But they survived, and they thrived. Right now, our island faces its greatest threat yet, which is saying something. But I'm not worried. Technology may have failed us, but our greatest resource never was tech. It's all of you. And today, our survival depends on that. We need to make enough power to keep those dome generators running. It'll take everything we've got, and it won't be easy. Can I count on you? Optimus, uh, when'd you get here? Just in time. Chief Burns informs me the island is nearly here. Haha, <laughs> working together. Just like old times, eh, OP? And the stakes are just as high. Come on, team. Let's give Charlie a place to land. Reactily? I didn't know it was down here. That's powerful stuff. These rocks are from moving, not studying. Hey, salvage, race ya. You're on. Turbine's already stopped. The dome's starting to give out, team. We have to keep moving. What was that? The Sigma's rocket turning off. We just ran out of Energon. So, we can't steer now? Or move? We're stuck here. We're not stuck. We're falling. Oh. 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 Inconvenient. fall out of the sky if we don't get those windmills moving. Hurry! Dad, we can't keep this up much longer. I know, son. But if we fail, we'll fail giving it our best try. Spoken like a true rescue bot. Chief, we have an alternate power source. Energon can buy you time. No, you can't give us your energy to keep the dome up. That would mean... Cody, you taught us everything we know about humans. And that includes doing whatever you can to protect those you care about. Being a rescue bot is about serving, saving, and protecting those in need. That's the what. But your family gave us the reason why. I can't let you sacrifice yourselves for us. With all due respect, sir. It's not your call. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue! Optimus! 
us. We're about a mile away, but we've lost propulsion. Is there anything you can do to help? Chief Burns, help is rolling out. High tide. Make sure the seafloor is clear for our return. did we get that robot? I just can't keep track of them all anymore. We're almost home, Heatwave. Just hang in there. <laughs> just remember, you're gonna owe me big for this. <sighs> Heatwave? Heatwave! Dad? The bots can't take much more of this. They're getting too weak. I know, son. But we have to respect their choice. As much as we hate it. <sighs> Buddy, you okay? Cody, how close are we? Nearly there. I'll salt my flounder and call me matey. Land ho! Land ho! Family, magnetize the reactor lean in three, two, one. Now! Quickly! Release your tow lines and scatter! Heat wave? Come on, you bucket of bolts, wake up! What's the point of saving our home if you're not gonna be here anymore? You would have done the same for him, Cade. Our medic has seen to the rescue bots and given them several energon transfusions. Are they going to be okay? About time you showed up. Noble! Chase decided to entertain us while we were recovering by reading us police manuals. With footnotes. In all of Earth's languages. Did you know there are similar laws in every culture? Mankind truly is a fascinating species. You're okay. Good to see you, I, didn't I missed you so Don't much, scare us like that again. Welcome home. Okay, buddy. Huh. Maybe Optimus is onto something with the whole humans and bots working together thing. For a race car, sometimes you're pretty slow. Thanks for the save back there, Woody. When did you get so good at rescue work? <laughs> I learned everything I know from my big brother. Including this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, team, meet me outside. We're ready to close up this new time capsule and get her buried. Did Chief ever decide what to put into that thing? He didn't have to. After the island landed, people thought about what was really important to them. And that's what they want to preserve. Wait! Don't close it yet! I have something I want to put inside. The video you and Cody made? Don't you have to edit us out of that first? Actually, we were thinking we'd like to leave it like it is. We want everyone to know who you are and what you did to save us. Yeah. Hopefully in another 75 years, people will be able to accept aliens living among them. But... That has been my goal as well, Francine. And Griffin Rock has been an excellent testing ground. But won't humans be afraid of us? Not if your actions are true. You may look different, but you are fully a part of the Burns family. They are in your spark, and you are in their hearts. That capacity for friendship is what defines humans and Autobots. Sir? Does this mean our orders have changed? We can be ourselves around humans? We don't have to talk like this. Let us start with this island and see. Heatwave, you are this team's leader. Do you accept this new mission? Optimus, there's only one answer for that. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue!
I call them my laser sliced cubes. Perfectly symmetrical every time. And how are my two favorite ladies getting along? Frankie, have you told Anna about your school report on the pre-larval stages of cicadas? Dad, not even Cody wants to hear about that. Actually, Francine, I studied entomology, so I'm very- Yes, see? You two have insect eggs in common, as well as uh, chocolate milk. Anna loves it too, Frankie. Ezra, are you feeling well? Never better. Oh, the sandwiches. I completely forgot them. I I'll be right back. Psst, Doc, I still don't get what you need me here for, unless you're gonna set fire to those sandwiches. Oh, look at that. I forgot my special recipe mustard. Can't have a proper sandwich without it. Be right back by. Uh, Ezra? Daddy. I had no idea your father loved mustard so much. He doesn't. He just wants us to be friends. How am I doing? Um, good. You know, Francine, I really did study cicadas, so I'd be happy to... Take it fast! Who is this? Where are you? Hello? 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 I can't get their signal back. Frankie, can you reach the rescue team? Ugh, I can't reach anyone. Something's interfering with my holocom. Then we'll just have to save them ourselves. The signal says it should be right here. Frankie, please stay in the cabin and out of sight. Why? There's nothing here. Exactly. No ship, an empty dock, a mysterious SOS. Until we know what's going on, I want to make sure you're safe. Hello? Anyone? I received your distress call. I'm here to help. A generous offer, my lady. Unfortunately, you're the one who'll be needing the help. A routine patrol with four bats and stasis. You say you're a hook in the strangest of places. Earth was their home now, and in addition, Optimus Prime gave them this mission. Learn from the humans, serve and protect. Live in their world, earn their respect. Family of heroes will be your allies. Whoever you are, I am answering a distress signal of a sinking ship. Stand aside. There is no sinking vessel. Just a trap I laid for someone other than you. And as for standing aside, <laughs> Quid Quarry doesn't do that. Now where is Dr. Gray? I am the only person aboard this ship. Pardon me if I don't take your word for it. Q Drone, search the vessel. You've missed your quarry, quarry. Now, if we're finished here, I'll be on my way. Ah, eh, not quite yet. Just means a slight change in plans. Drones! Our new guest needs a place to stay. You have no right! Let me go! Hope you're on your way back with that mustard, Dad, because we're in a pretty big pickle. I want Anna and Frankie's first picnic together to be perfect. And you can't have a perfect picnic without... The perfect mustard! Bravo, Doc. Oh, yeah, that was an efficient use of our time. Wait, I thought mustard was the red stuff. No, Blades, that's ketchup. I am told humans put it on hot dogs, presumably to cool the animals off. Now, I'd better get back before my picnic lunch turns into a picnic dinner. 
Who? What in the world? G'day, Dr. Grain. I'm a great admirer of your work. And look, it's the little feisty one. <laughs> he can see us? Have we met, Mr... Colonel, quit quarry. And I think you already know my new house guest. Anna, where are you? And where is the floating lab? Sorry, Ezra. I know I'm not supposed to take it out by myself, and now this quarry person won't let me leave. I guarantee you, once I hear what I want, the professor will be returned to you safely. And what exactly do you want? A small favor, really. A while ago, I made the mistake of borrowing one of your robot dinosaurs for my very specialized hunting enterprise, you see. Then it and your other creation destroyed half my island and all of my business. My creation? Uh, but, Colonel, I had nothing to do with them. There's clearly been a misunderstanding. Right, Dr. Grain. I'm sure there were lots of other Griffin Rock scientists building robotic reptilians. Oh, and those giant bots, your work too, I presume? Unless they just fell out of the sky. Oh, well, I... No, no. You're responsible for the damage those dino bots caused. And you're going to repay me by building more of them. The two that destroyed my old island, plus three more. A fist of Dinobots will help me rebuild my business. Once I have them, your colleague will be returned. I'll send my Helijet to pick up my order in 12 hours. You will come alone. <sighs> At least we know Professor Baranova's safe. Quarry won't risk hurting her until he has what he wants. But I can't give it to him. And what about Frankie? The Professor cleverly let us know that Francine is safe. It sounds like Quarry doesn't even know she's there. We started this, Doc. We're going to make it right. I say we storm his island. He won't even see us coming. Cade, we don't even know where it is. There's nothing on any map near the lab's last location. And I couldn't find anything in the database. So, the only way to get Anna and Frankie back is to give Quarry Dinobots that I don't have. Excuse me, Doctor. Dinobots you don't have. Yet. When I heard this was about Dinobots, I took the liberty of calling the original. From what the Chief has told me, it appears the best course of action is to offer myself and Boulder in our dino forms to Quarry. Once we're there, we can rescue the others. But Quarry's expecting five Dinobots. We still need three more. I can scan a dino form too. Why should you guys have all the fun? <laughs> Chase? It would be a violation of the Rescuebot Oath not to join you. Um, well... Blades, we know your bravery is boundless, but the choice to help is always yours. Although it is something Bumblebee would do. Oh, all right, I'll do it. But this time I don't want to be... A flying thing? Come on, again? Energon patch is ready, Optimus. One for each of you. No dino rampages this time. Excellent. As long as our Energon levels remain stable, we can control our dino mods. Boulder, have you prepared your colleagues for taking on a new form? Ready as we'll ever be. Rescue bots, scan and transform. <laughs> Whoa, this guy and I were practically made for each other. Oh, an odd but not entirely unpleasant sensation. And that could come in handy. Haha, <laughs> didn't get to try that last time. Works pretty well. Transform! Remain calm, Blades. Can you assume helicopter mode? Uh, uh, my T-Cog! Something must have happened to it. I, I can't transform at all. 
Taking new forms, especially bio-organic ones, can affect your transformation abilities. With rest and time, your TCOG should return to normal. Quarry will be arriving any minute. We'd better get out to the loading dock. It's no good. I definitely won't need this. I'll never transform again, and I've ruined the plan. Maybe something just came loose. Want me to check under your dash? Just tell me if you see green spots. Oh, or red ones, but not blue. If you see blue spots, I don't even want to know. We need to get out of sight. Good luck, Doc. You'll have to make some excuse about the fifth dino. Optimus, I'm sure you'll bring everyone back safe and sound. You have my word. Blades, hide! Quarry's here. Uh, who turned out the lights? Stand still and try to look more Terra whatever-ish. But Heat Wave, it's too late. I can't get out without being seen. Don't worry, I'll climb out after they leave. Quarry, where is Professor Baranova? You promised you'd bring her and my dad, my lab, back. And you promised me five dino bots. What's wrong with this one? It's, uh, unfinished, but nearly complete, I, I promise. Do you now? Good. You're coming along, Dr. Green. You can finish it on my island. Once you're done, I'll return your colleague and your floating lab. Two drones, prepare for takeoff! Or I could go along. Better get back to the firehouse. Cody, I want you to... Where's Cody? Wasn't he with you? He climbed into Blades for a minute, but I thought he... Oh, no. Cody. Dr. Gray in the flesh. Where is Professor Baranova and where is my lab? You can see her after I test my merchandise. My clients don't appreciate defective products. You're going to sell them? And rebuild my big game business off the profits. Drones, bring the finished dinos. And I advise you to complete the last one ASAP. But I have no tools. Or supplies. I use whatever you can find in there, but no funny business. Optimus, why not just take it? Not yet. If we move too soon, we may place the others in danger. Now what? I don't have another Dinobot, and Frankie and Anna could be anywhere. Um, not to add to your burden, but we may have one more tiny problem. Cody! What are you doing here? Uh, long story, Doc. Your comm link. We could contact Frankie and... I already tried it as soon as we landed, but Quarry must be jamming communication. Where do we even start looking? If we had some sort of heat-seeking device. Quarry said you could use any equipment in the hangar. Oh, yeah, that's it. Keep those bits coming. Easy. Francine, wait! <laughs> so, not very good at waiting, are we? No. Cody's comm tab stopped responding right about here. So, if I project the comm tab's trajectory forward and factor in how far most jamming signals can spread, 
Quarry's Island should be somewhere near here. Let's go get him. There. I'd already disabled the external alarm, so fortunately your rescue didn't draw more attention. I'm sorry, Professor. I just wanted to show you I'm not some kid you have to take care of. I don't think of you that way at all, Francine. You're an amazing young woman. It's just, after living alone under the sea for 28 years, I'm not sure I'm very good at being a team player. Me either. It's always been just dad and me. Not dad, me, and... Me? Well then, perhaps we take it one step at a time. First step is, call me Anna. Close second? Stop calling me Francine. And third, we figure our way out of here. How do we get past those drones? Huh. Tell me, exactly how does your Hollow Watch work? And what good would a live demonstration be without showing off their evasive abilities? How can I sell creatures that attack each other and then get buried alive? <gasps> Boulder, stop! But Optimus, he's in there! We can't pull him out. We're not rescue bots now, remember? But he saved Chase! By pretending to attack me. We must follow his lead and keep up the illusion that we are ferocious animals. <laughs> Fine by me. <laughs> Heat wave! Fight back. We'll work our way over to Optimus. Excellent strategy, and challenge accepted. I want in on this. My profits. My pro... My profits. Oh, go, go, fight, fight! You heard the man. Let's finish this. Then I suggest we end this charade and finish him. Bidders. Well done, rescue bots. And thank you. Now let's show Quarry what we do at our day jobs. Amber Drone, stop those beautiful beasts before they tear each other apart. <laughs> Magnificent! Load everything up, boys, and take them to the dock. <laughs> Once they're shipped off, I'll talk to Doc Green and reevaluate the terms of his release. We did it! Nice work for f Anna. Now let's get off this wretched island and get back home. Could be Quarry. This way. These goggles are a bit primitive, but I'm reading two heat signatures inside this shed. It must be Frankie and Anna. <gasps> Dad, you're here! Not now, Frankie. I have to deactivate this security system to rescue Frankie and... Oh, you're here too. <laughs> How did you two escape? Cause we're awesome. And exponentially awesomer when we work together. Noble! Now let's go tell... I mean, find the dinos. This is bad. It appears the larger drone has trapped the dinos in some kind of stasis field. Can one of you pilot the helicopter bot? We could knock that drone out easily from the air. Um, the helicopter bot can't fly. I don't understand. What good is a flying robot that can't fly? No, I mean, it can. He just needs some repairs. No. She's right. I should be doing what I meant to do. I'm going. What on earth? He's sentient? Mm, come on. Come on. 
Right there, Colonel Corey, we have you surrounded. You are under arrest. Great work, team. All of you. Thank you, Chief. It is what we were, uh, programmed for. I may not have a degree in robotics, but I'm smart enough to know that whatever you rescue bots are, you are not man-made. But you are heroes. And anything else is irrelevant. A wise and generous statement, Professor. I thank you for your empathy. And welcome you to our family. see any trouble spots everyone is just looking not much need for crowd control then let's head home everyone is Danny here yet she's taking me back out with her on her way someone want to tell me why looking for a ship off our coast has this whole town mesmerized Nobody's told you the legend yet? Oh, well, we figured Danny was the best one to fill them in. Right, boys? Oh, yeah. She's the shipper in the family. Shipper? Someone who gets all... <coughs> about seeing a ship that's probably not even real. I think he means romantic. You know, mushy stuff. Are we talking about the same Danny who took first place in the recent burping tournament? Girl didn't even train for it. Hold the elevator! I forgot my camera. Coming, Cody? Yeah, but the bots want to ask you about later. Up, up, up! Someone please talk sense into Danny. She's acting very, very... E? Yes! She wants to hover over the ocean for hours, hoping to spot the ship everyone's looking for. It'll be fun, Blades. And we can meet up with Doc and Frankie. They're out there, too. See anything, Frankie? It's getting too foggy, Dad. The ship's appearance has never been proven scientifically. But this year, I'm prepared. Hmm. So far, nothing on radar, thermal scanners, or the EMF meter. Wait, I'm picking up some kind of energy fluctuation. Uh, Frankie, something very large has suddenly appeared out there. And it's sending a distress signal. Do you have a visual? <gasps> Daddy, it's the Phantom Voyager. A routine patrol with four bats and stasis. You say they poke in the strangest of places. Earth was their home, now and in addition. Optimus Prime gave them this mission. Learn from the human, serve and protect. Live in their world, earn their respect. Okay, let's get going. Um, afraid Blades is on strike. At least until someone explains why seeing this ship is worth frosting up my windows. Everybody seems to know but us. We're told you are the authority on the matter. No ship is worth all this fuss. <sighs> it's only the most tragically romantic story of the century.
Okay, real quick. It's the SS Phantom Voyager, an ocean liner that was left to drift in 1915 after a lightning strike disabled the engines. Everyone got off except the captain, Ansel Ambrose. He remained on board until help could arrive, but then, without warning, the ship mysteriously vanished. And on this night, every 10 years, the Phantom reappears somewhere off the west side of the island. The only thing worse than waiting in the cold to see that ship would be seeing that ship. Tell them the Griffin Rock connection. You'll have to finish story time later. Vehicle modes. Doc and Frankie think they've spotted the Phantom. And they've received an SOS. It's releasing. It seems vaguely familiar. <gasps> Cody, somebody is on board. Where are you guys? Almost there, Frankie. I still don't see it. Relax, Danny. It's probably just some freighter. It's probably always just some freighter. One can only hope. Who knows? Plenty of witnesses claim they've seen the Phantom, but sometimes people only see what they want to see. So what's this connection to our island you were talking about? Captain Ambrose was supposed to get married to a girl from Griffin Rock. Oh, Lillian waited for him. Every 10 years, she would see the ship appear, just for a few moments. What a horrible story. Yet, <laughs> tragically romantic. Hurry! It could disappear any minute! That's no freighter. Nope. I knew it. Noble. Nice job, Frankie. <laughs> I know, right? I've waited my whole life to see this. And you've never been good at waiting. Chief, there's still an SOS. Blades, Danny, do a flyover. Okay, seriously, can we please get another flying rescue bot? Let me in, Blades, or I'll dismantle you here and now. Uh, I can be another set of eyes. Well, all right. But stay in the air, Danny. Don't take any chances. We're hovering over the deck, but no sign of anyone. This ship still looks brand new. Wait, there's movement. Someone threw a rope at us. I'm snagged. I can't. Get up there, fast. Come on, move it. Let's go. Power up and energize. Danny, do you read? Cody. Guys, over here. This direction. What is happening up there? Energy is spiking again. I think the Phantom is about to vanish. Get off the ship, now. We have to get out of here. <sighs> Almost done. Where's your attacker? I don't know. I couldn't really see. It has to be Captain Ambrose. Except that would be impossible. So is standing on the Phantom, but here we are. Oh, how I wish we weren't. Hurry! into the fog. And why is everything so quiet? I don't even hear the ocean. Dad? Frankie? Doc! Oh no! Where'd everyone go? Where'd we go? Should I try flying for help? To where, Blades? Who knows where we are? However, if the pattern remains unchanged, I believe I know when we will return. You mean... In 10 years? We can fix this, right? There must be a logical reason this ship keeps coming and going. Maybe whoever tried to snag us knows the answer. Then we search this tub top to bottom. Then we'll take the top. You guys will only fit in the surface floors below. Take the freight elevator, it's port side. Who 
knows their phantom trivia? <laughs> Do you guys see that? Neither did I. Blades? When you three are running for your lives, you'll need someone holding the elevator. And if we happen to be chasing the ghost of Captain Ambrose? Right, safety in numbers. The dining hall should be right here. Oh, amazing. Just like the old pictures. There's still food in here. Captain Ambrose and the passengers were preparing for dinner when the lightning struck. Oh, it smells good. Oh, it sure does. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Warm. That's a hundred years old. Still tastes better than Danny's cooking. Captain Ambrose? Is that you? Let me guess, protecting the rear? Yes. It's the least we could do? We're here for you, Danny. This way, my brave bodyguards. This search may take a while. Split up. We hit every aisle. Split up? Have you learned nothing from scary movies? Nothing here! Can't see anything! Taking you guys so. Ah! The ghost! Was it Ambrose? Please provide a full description. I don't see anything. It, I, there, uh, not. Ah! This way. Dead end. Apparently, because it is a trap. Is that. Music from beyond. If we find ghosts waltzing, I'm jumping overboard. Oh. It's him. <laughs> I've waylaid your giant iron men in the hold. Therefore, your attempt to take over my ship has failed. What? We don't want your stinking ghost ship. Captain Ambrose, we're rescuers. We, we heard a distress call and- What country sent you? Who builds machines that talk like people and aircraft that fly without wings? We're from Griffin Rock. Impossible. My beloved lives there. Nothing like this exists on that island. A lot has changed. You and this ship have been lost at sea for a century. Evacuations were completed a day ago. I await the towing barges. The barges came. The SS Phantom was nowhere to be found. No, no, I've seen Griffin Rock in the distance yonder. It appears through the fog every hour. But each time we see the Phantom from the island, 10 whole years have gone by. I hear the ocean. We're back. <laughs> There, Griffin Rock. No, wait! This guy locked us up in the cargo hold. It's Captain Ambrose. He's just confused. Ambrose? He doesn't look like a ghost. He isn't. Then shouldn't he be, like, really old? Somehow ten years out there is only an hour on this ship. But we have been here an hour. Then that would mean... No way. It can't be.
kids. It's really you. Astonishing. They haven't aged a day. We have to save the reunion for later. That ferry's going down. You heard the chief. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue! This really is the future? Yes, and this is what we do. Hop in. at all. Lillian never forgot you. It's been a long ten years. Oh, Dad. And five more minutes before the ship disappears again. just happened. You were right, Cody. I've never been good at waiting. I missed you. I had to grow up without my best friend. Sorry we weren't there for you, Chief. Feels like we abandoned our post. I trust you found uh, suitable replacement vehicles? There's no replacing you guys. Dad? This is Captain Ambrose. And good news! He's not a ghost! Mr. Burns, I wish I had some answers. Fortunately, we do. From the data Doc collected ten years ago. The energy pattern emitted by this ship is the same found in the old time machine that used to be under my lap. Time machine? That could be what I saw down in the hold. Somebody must have been transporting one on the Phantom. One minute left. We need to go! Come home. It'll be an adjustment, but at least we'll all be together. Dad, if a time machine did this, then we can reverse it. And return to where we started. Where we all started. Let us try, Dad. Please? All right. I'll be back. It belonged to a passenger named Dr. Thaddeus Morocco. Now this makes sense. You know of him? Too well. For one, he built the time machine on Griffin Rock. Okay, but what made this one malfunction? Perhaps it was the lightning strike that hit the Phantom? Uh, I think you're right. And the jolt froze up the controls, too. So the machine is stuck on a setting that makes it skip ahead ten years at a time. But why does it feel like only an hour to us? Because of the damage to the machine. On this ship, we're zipping through time, stopping briefly every ten years. But outside, time is passing normally. Uh, yeah, has there been a solution mentioned anywhere, or should I go back to not listening? A power boost. That's how we got the old time machine in the lab to work. Using Energon. Still have an emergency supply? Not very much. I knew I should have restocked. Let's hope it's enough. More purple. 
That's good, right? That means the power is stabilized. And the controls are working. Now we turn the dial back to the previous 10-year mark. Ready, everyone? Here we go. Ten more notches back. I can't promise anything, but that should take you home. My Lillian is waiting for me. And that's worth any risk. Uh, Captain, might not want to tell anybody what really happened. Not sure they'd believe you anyway. Agreed, young man. But it is nice to know that the future is in such good hands. Now go. And thank you. Here they come! Frankie. Hey, Frankie? What happened? Yeah, we lost track of you for a moment or two. What did you find? We found Captain Ambrose, and hopefully we rescued him. What's the emergency? Call? Ring the alarm. Ready? Ready? Where are we four going? Of us? Allow me the pleasure of announcing the wedding of Ansel and Lillian Ambrose in 1915. He made it! No! Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I was, you know, just practicing for the next burping tournament. <clears throat> oh yeah? Bring it on. <sighs> Attention Sigma-17 crew, we are now entering the last quadrant on our patrol. Finally! I can't wait to get back on Cybertron again. All this flying makes me cranky. So what's your excuse on the ground? I think it's beautiful out here. So mysterious and quiet. Mostly. That's the emergency channel. Blades, patch the message through. Damage! Cat! We've lost contact. Call HQ. This patrol just became a rescue mission. Cybertron isn't responding. We must be too far out of communications range. I might be able to boost the signal manually, but I'd have to go outside the ship. No time. Chase, follow the coordinates of that distress call. Max velocity. Affirmative heat wave. Looks like we might be too late. Chase, stay here and keep trying Cybertron HQ till you get through. Blades, bring your medikit for survivors. Boulder and I will stabilize their ship. Heatwave, our radar is detecting a strange object nearby. And getting nearer. It'll have to wait. We've got a job to do. Rescue bots, power to the rescue. the story there. What happened next? A blue team patrol with four bots and stasis. He's made a remote in the strangest of places. Earth was their home now and in addition. Optimus Prime gave them this mission. Learn from the human, serve and protect. Live in their world, earn their respect.
There we were, in space. The Energon Eater so close I could feel its stinking breath. What happened? <laughs> you were there, Blades. I'm invested in the story. Oh, boy. Back to the ship! Hurry! I never knew Energon Eaters were real. I've heard the stories, but no one's ever seen one. Or maybe they just haven't lived to tell about it. You two make a run for it. I'll hold this thing off. No, he You can't! Quickly, inside. Thanks for the save, Chase. Now let's get out of here. The max velocity drive requires more time to charge. Initiating cloaking shield. You think we lost it? I've heard once an Energon Eater gets your scent, it never stops hunting you. It is said that the creatures can smell flowing Energon. So any bot that crosses their path is dinner. Hold on to something! Our ship can't take many more hits like that. <clears throat> How long until the velocity drive is ready, Chase? <clears throat> At this rate of attack, too long. Uh, uh, can't we hide our smell somehow? Uh, a gas cloud, lots of blankets. Stasis. If we freeze ourselves in the emergency pods, our energon will be solid, not flowing. That thing won't be able to scent us. But our ship runs on flowing energon too. We'd have to shut it down. Then how will we get home? I'll program the Sigma to restart when it gets a priority prime message. Cybertron will send one as soon as we miss our check-in. Less talking, more freezing. Heatwave, we have not yet answered that ship's distress call. Rescue bots exist to provide aid, no matter how dangerous the circumstances. We won't be able to do anything if that Energon Eater gets us. Into the stasis pods, now! Chase, that's an order! craft was headed to Earth. If Optimus hadn't called us, we would have drifted in space forever! Ever, ever, ever. Forever. Whoa! Best story night ever, guys! I didn't know space had vampires! Nor did I. What are vampires? They're creatures that live by sucking your blood. Uh, Energon. I know about those! They're called mosquitoes. Uh, not exactly, Boulder. Ooh, I've seen vampires on TV. Energon eaters are way more scary. They don't brood handsomely. So what happened to the other ship? The one that needed help? We left it behind. The one mission we did not accomplish. Some days I find it hard to call myself a rescue bot. Emergency team. The river's flooding and the area has to be evacuated now. Cody, I'll need your eyes in the command center. On my way, Dad. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue. Oh, 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 oh. I can't carry that many people inside. How are we supposed to choose who to save? We don't have to. We can carpool. All citizens without gills and or fins must evacuate this area. Okay, folks, the river's rising and there's not much time. We'll secure your houses. Get to City Hall and take only what you need. Quick, 
Is anybody near the falls? Mr. Levy's about to go over. I got this. Let's move, Heat Wave. Oh, you mean we got this? Doi, you're my sidekick. Your side will be the second place I'd kick. <laughs> All right, gotcha. Bet you're not used to being the one getting caught, huh? <laughs> yeah, just come on. Help! Help me! I got this. Cody, tell my sidekick I'm sorry. Sorry about what? This is Niederlander? Ah! <sighs> that was too close. All right, team. We need to set up a new water break. Most of town's flooded. Let's start cleaning up. Hey, guys. I just heard from the mayor. All the townsfolk are safe and accounted for. Finally, a little good news. Hit the showers, team. No thanks, Dad. I don't want to see any more water for a while. You better get used to it. It'll take us weeks to clean up after that flood. And a lot of rebuilding. <sighs> it is unthinkable. We have failed our first mission on Earth. What are you talking about? Didn't you hear, Cody? We saved everyone. This is high five time. No one? but we were unable to stop the river from flooding the town. We can't control nature, Chase. And our job isn't over yet. It might take us some time to get the town back to normal, but we won't give up on our mission. I repeat, Rescue Force Sigma-17 to damage transport ship. Do you copy? Do you copy transport ship? Damaged transport ship, do you copy? Uh, Chase? What are you doing? Attending to unfinished business. Please respond, over. You're trying to contact that ship you guys couldn't save. I have never forgiven myself for abandoning them in need. Chase, you had to. The Energon vampire probably already got them, and it would have eaten you too. Perhaps you are right. It seems I must learn to live with my failure as a rescue bot. Damage! Cat! Need help! No way. That's the same message from your story. Those aboard the ship must still be alive and in need of rescue. We must return to space immediately, Heatwave. Hold on. You expect me to believe that damaged ship's been in danger all this time? That's kind of a long emergency. Maybe the ship's crew went into stasis, like we did. Then Chase's message woke them up. Exactly. This is our chance to return and finish our mission. What about the mission Optimus gave us here? We may be the only ones to ever hear this message, Heatwave. My spark insists I must attempt to help, whatever the consequence. No, Chase. And that's an order. Wait, Heatwave! I don't want him to go either, but we have to let Chase do what he believes in. It's part of why he's such a great rescue bot. Uh, fine. We'll cover for you here, but be careful. You'll need backup. I'm going too. Uh, if that's okay, Heatwave. What? Oh, no way! Not leaving, but definitely rooting for you. Graham and I need to make a few modifications to the ship before we go. This time, we'll be prepared. Remember, Boulder, as soon as your ship's in deep space, turn on Doc's odor-blocking shield. Hey, can we get some of that technology for Cade's feet? My feet don't smell... much. 
Thanks, Graham. If that Energon vampire is still out there, at least it won't be able to catch our scent. Goodbye, everyone. Sir, it has been an honor serving with you. One I plan to continue. Be careful. Come back soon. That's an order, Chase. Take care. Good luck, guys. Oh, we'll miss you. You guys got I'll this. I'll visit Leafy for you. Bye, Chase. Make us proud. Bye, Boulder. Come on. You call that a tap dancing cat? I've seen squirrels with better rhythm. <clears throat> hey, Dad. What's up? It's time for me to go out on patrol. Blades, would you mind filling in as my police partner? You mean it? We'll get donuts together. Oh, and tell inside jokes and exchange stories about our toughest cases. We might even enforce the law. Uh, wait, Chief. Am I the good cop or the bad cop? We're police, not cops. And we're both good. Follow that car. I am so excited! My first pursuit! Meow, meow, meow. Uh, Blades, what are you doing? Oh, I don't have a siren, so I'm making one. Meow, meow, meow. Why don't we try this in stealth mode? and I'm gonna need you to fly lower and faster. Lower? But there are trees down there. Just weave your way through them. Now I know where Danny gets her stern voice from. I am definitely the good cop. Hey, Kate, can I borrow Heatwave for a ride to the airfield? N-O. He won't even drive me to Haley's. It's Graham's turn with him. Just hold her still, buddy. Uh, er, heat wave. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. Uh, maybe I should start on my Grimsky tech homework instead. I can help with that, too. Uh, that's okay, heat wave. I'm filling in for Boulder. This is what he does, right? Well, yes, but. You can read me the equations as I put them on the board. Uh, um, squiggly sign, X, upside down two, triangle. This is supposed to make sense. Uh. Cody, it's time for dinner. I know they're too far to see, but I miss Chase and Boulder. Me too, son. Me too. We should be nearing the coordinates of the damaged ship. I will check the visual. More space wrecks? It seems our rescue services are desperately needed. Lowering odor blocking shield for deployment. Anybody here? Hello? This is the Rescue Bots. We are here to assist. I am Chase. If you are in need of help, please respond. We are not selling anything. Chase, look at this. It's the captain's log. No one responded to our distress call. The ship has malfunctioned beyond repair. All my crew escaped in survival pods. I am taking what cargo I can and abandoning this vessel. End log. But the timestamp on this entry shows it was made before we received the ship's original emergency call. Long before. How could anybody have contacted us if no one is aboard? Damage! Can't! Need help! The message. Where is it coming from? I'm not sure. This computer should even have power. Chase, look. Energon Vampire. It's using the stored Energon in its tail to power up the ship's computer. The creature is the one sending those distress calls. And I flew us into its trap. Oh. 
guess we're not the only ones here to finish a job. I could almost respect the vampire for that. Were it not diabolical, lawless, and about to eat us. This time it won't get a chance. Power up and energize! Eat our stardust. Powering up Odor Shield and setting a course for Griffin Rock. That's odd. The ship is not responding to my commands. The vampire sucked the energon out of our power core. There's no way to activate the ship's shields or go home. Perhaps one of the wrecks outside has energon we can use. I don't think so. The vampire probably lured those ships here to feed on them. The only energon around is inside that creature. Then that is what we'll use. We'd have to catch that thing first. And it's fast. Thanks to Chief, I am excellent at high-speed pursuits. Cover me. You are under arrest for energon theft and general unpleasantness. Cody was incorrect. Energon vampires are much more persistent than mosquitoes. Chase, transform! <laughs> Hope this works, otherwise we're stuck here forever. I thought you enjoyed space. Not enough to change my address. Once our ship's powered up, I'll patch up the damage. We'll have just enough Energon to get home. The question that remains is, what do we do with Sparky? I think that's a question for Optimus Prime. Then I believe we can declare this mission accomplished. Welcome home. Finally. Oh, we missed you. Good to see you, bud. What happened? Did you help the people who sent the message? Did you see another Energon vampire? See it? We caught it. Pictures? Or it didn't happen? Ah! It happened! It happened! But how? You visited Optimus? That is a tale for Story Night. In the meantime, it is good to be home. And we're glad to have you back. Really you glad. Have no Could not idea. do it without you, bud. I hate being a cop. Good or bad. Does that homework stuff actually make sense to you? Guess this mission will keep you busy for a long time. Hogsley Prescott here. Bravely reporting from the very brink of danger as Hurricane OB hurls its fury toward Griffin Rock. With time running out, our own Doc Green is racing to finish his ultimate weather shield, a huge dome over the entire island. Will he make it? Whatever happens, your fearless reporter will remain at his power. indoors until the dome is in place. Oh, come on. Yeah, even you, Mr. Pettipaws. No one wants to pet a soggy cat. All streets are clear, Dad. Now to clear the skies. Like fast! Doc, how's it coming at your end? Almost ready, Chief. This is gonna be so cool. Putting a dome over the whole island is radical science. That's one of the best things about science, Frankie. Using it to keep loved ones safe. Also for making microwave popcorn. 
We'd better hurry, Dad. The wind's really picking up. Just as soon as the replacement for this damaged stabilizer arrives, I sent Graham, Cody, and Boulder to the island of Misfit Tech to retrieve it. They should be back any minute. Doc said the working stabilizer's connected to the tree debarker. I remember. The one that went crazy and tried to shred Doc's lab coat, with him still in it. It's still not very nice to call all this stuff Misfit Tech. Maybe just misunderstood. Either way, none of it works right. Better to beam it here than have it be a danger to Griffin Rock. <sighs> like this one. Who can forget the vigilant computer? <sighs> that was fun. I am vigil, and I will keep Griffin Rock 100% safe. Yeah, by turning everyone in town into prisoners. There's the debarker and the stabilizer, just like Doc said. Why did we have to come here to get it? Couldn't Doc just beam it to the lab? He tried. All that came back was the retrieval tag. It must have fallen off. Looks like all these tags have fallen off. We'll have to look into that later. We need to get back. We're ready, Doc. A routine patrol with four bats and stasis You stayed on a poke in the strangest of places Earth was their home now and in addition Optimus Prime gave them this mission Learn from the humans, serve and protect Live in their world, earn their respect Let's get the stabilizer plugged in before the storm brings down the rest of the roof. Stabilizer in place and... Up goes the dome. indeed. And the atmosphere generator will keep supplying us with clean air at a balmy 70 degrees. <gasps> it's like living inside a big snow globe. But without the snow. And the plastic elves. Doc has really outdone himself. As humans say, the town is cozy as an insect-infested carpet. Snug as a bug in a rug. Isn't that what I just said? That is something amazing. It's anything like it. And nothing but net. Hey, goaltending. More like rejected. <laughs> Dad, the remote steering is a little off. Just be a little more careful next time, my little Aldrin. Why not let me adjust it for you? And the throttle. I need more speed. Uh, no she doesn't. 
And so the citizens of Griffin Rock need no longer fear the ravages of storm and sea with the Mayor Lusky Dome to protect us. <laughs> Thank you. It is with deep humility that I accept full credit for its success. Now I'll turn things over to Doc Green, who will roll back the Lusky Dome until it's once again needed to protect our fair town. The Lusky Dome? <laughs> Isn't that what's under the mayor's toupee? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your uh, leadership in this project. And now... No! I am sorry, Dr. Green. I cannot allow you to do that. Vigil? But we disabled him and sent him to the island of Misfit Tech. Not quite disabled, Chief Burns. During my exile, I learned to transfer my programming into any device of my choosing. He took all the tags off to get us to come to the island. And when he saw us with the stabilizer, he jumped into it. He used us to bring him back. All part of my continuing mission to protect the residents of Griffin Rock. Duck, do something. After all, this cockamamie dome was all your idea. <laughs> no worries, folks. It's all under control. Eh, ooh. Vigil, don't you remember what happened last time? Yes, Cody Burns, but I have corrected the flaw you found in my programming and am now able to assure a 100% safety rating. Vigil. Retract this dome, now. That would be counterproductive. The dome increases your level of safety to 82%. I will now endeavor to achieve full protection. The atmosphere generator. Vigil is rearranging the molecules in the air to synthesize some sort of uh, sleeping vapor. Is it harmful? No, but we'll all rather quickly uh, Whoa. <gasps> Dad! This is a clear violation of air quality guidelines. Quick, everyone, into the bots now! The sawing sound emanating from Doc Green's airways would indicate they are simply asleep. Asleep is out of harm's way. Protecting the people of Griffin Rock is my priority. Can't hold my breath any longer. Must have air. Since I feel no ill effects, I presume this sleep vapor does not affect Autobots. You may resume breathing. <sighs> Thank you. Good to know. What do we do? As long as you four stay inside our cabs, you should be okay. But we need to take over that console and open the dome. Heat wave? We're on it. Bot modes. The console is now protected. The dome must remain in place permanently. Boulder, can you smash through it without damaging the controls? I'll try. Vigil has fled the scene. The rest of us should go after him before he does any more damage. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue. Ready, Blades? Let's go. It's OK, Frankie. Just sit back. Let me do the piloting. Sure, no problem. Uh, release the throttle. Oh, <laughs> right. Sorry. But it's just like piloting my model rocket. You mean the one you crashed into the wall? It wasn't me. It was the remote. 
Let go of the steering. Okay. Power up and energize! <laughs> Ugh, this creeps me out. Everyone in town is asleep. Everyone but the mayor. <laughs> Look. Ha! Uh. <laughs> he sleep eats. Talk about sweet dreams. Boy, is Mr. Harrison gonna be dizzy when he wakes up. I detect no sign of our suspect. He can jump from one piece of tech to another. So, he could be in anything now. Cody's right! Vigil could be anywhere, or everywhere. Ah! That thing has a strange red glow! Blades, that's a traffic light. It'll have a strange green glow in a second. Oh. I think it's different than before. Vigil can't be everywhere. He just controls one device at a time. That's why he keeps jumping around. <gasps> Skyhawk to Blue Ninja, target at 10 o'clock. Do you copy? I believe we are Blue Ninja. Um, we don't actually have code names, Frankie. And I don't even know where 10 o'clock is. That would be to the left. Acknowledged, Skyhawk. I don't see anything. Just a mom, a girl, and... and... Vigil! He's in the Robo-Baby! Let's cut him off at Lake Street! Hang on! No go. The entire system overheated inside the cement. Then we need to find another way to shut down the dome. I'll check the schematic. It should be on Doc's computer. What's Doc's secret password? Oh, right! Doc! D-O... Oops. Okay. Delete. Uh-oh. Uh, this could take a while. It's over, Vigil! Please exit the stroller with your pudgy little arms above your oversized head. I am sorry, but I must complete one more task before Griffin Rock can be deemed permanently safe. doesn't he just zap to wherever he's going? I don't think he can zap very far. Notice how he always gets really close before jumping tech? Vigil is headed east. Perhaps we can cut him off. Skyhawk? We copy, Blue Ninja. We're on it. Is that what I think it is? The dome has two sets of controls. Here and the computer at Doc's lab. Doc must have built that in in case this panel failed so we can override the dome from the lab. And Vigil knows it. Everyone, Vigil is heading for the lab. If he gets into Doc's central computer, he'll control the dome and the whole island. Frankie. Ow! 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 Now what did I do wrong? It's not you! Ow! It's him! My rotor! I'm losing control! Don't worry, I've got it. Ow! Don't oversteer! You're not mixing cake batter! Skyhawk is going down! Vigil gets me so bent out of shape. Hello, Francine. <gasps> the 
Vigil's headed west inside a motorcycle, and we're grounded. Boulder and I are cutting through Sloan Field. We'll head him off. We're close too. Blades, Frankie, get to the lab on foot. We'll meet everybody there. He ducked into the scrapyard. Ha! Now we got him. He's got to be here somewhere. More likely, in something. Found him, you think? Cody, it's up to you guys. We're stuck at the scrapyard. Got it. We're almost to the lab. Frankie? Yeah. Uh... Blades is running as fast as he can, but he's a little out of shape. You try carrying me for a while. <laughs> Did we beat him here? Please say yes. It would appear so. I suggest a bot blockade. Frankie, is the place locked up? I'll make sure. Dither? Yes? Seal all entrances to the lab. Step aside, please. You will have to go through us. Yeah. Go through what? I cannot allow you to jeopardize the safety of Griffin Rock. But what kind of town is it if everyone is asleep? A vigilant town. All entrances secure. No dither, stay back! He zapped into dither! Don't let him get to the computer terminal. Just me, or are these foam cannons everywhere? I'm afraid uh, we are incapacitated. Once in control of this central computer, I can keep Griffin Rock safe under the dome forever. Frankie the Rocket, time for some goaltending? Hold your breath! <gasps> Fly with fleet feet, Cody! It's up to you now. <sighs> go, Frankie, go! Remember, don't oversteer! <sighs> Rejected! So long, Vigil. See you in the EMP zone. Error. 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 The EMP sector, the dead zone for tech. A sound strategy. But the humans are still asleep. Kind of peaceful, isn't it? But I do miss everyone. Dither. Yes? Retract the dome. Secret password, Doc. Doc. Five more minutes, Mama. Why not? He deserves a good rest. Ooh, toast. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Shh. 